All right. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is August 2nd, 2023. And um, we'll do brief introductions here um, in just a second. But I asked Chris Sloan, who's starting school, believe it or not, like in a week and a half, I think, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. To, to kind of talk about how he might be integrating AI into his uh, classroom and um, kind of keeping it real that way in some way. And he had a meeting today, and we're going to talk about uh, with other uh, administrators in his building and, and teachers. Um, and so we're going to talk, we're going to start there, but then we'll go kind of wherever you'd like to go um, as we continue. But let, let us, let, just indeed do a round of introductions as David Cole joins us. Marina, do you want to start us off that way? We're just doing introductions, David. Welcome. Um, hi, I'm Marina. I am a third grade teacher in Westchester County, New York. And, and Marina and I have been attached at the hip working, <laughs> working together with 24 um, pre-service teachers um, around AI and now comment and so forth this, this July. And we just finished. So uh, like, well, we're almost done, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's still some people finishing it. Anyway, mm -hmm. welcome. Getting there. Peggy. I'm Peggy George. I'm a retired elementary principal. Mm -hmm. I've been retired for quite a while. Um, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Daniel, I'm just going to call you so we keep moving here. Yeah. yeah, so I'm Daniel. I'm a second year PhD student in the School of Education at UC Great. Irvine. Great. Cool, cool. Gigi. Hi. So I'm a um, high school, well, I was a high school theater teacher for 18 years, and now I will be a middle school theater teacher. Hmm. Great. In Southern California. Cool, cool. Tell us a little bit about how you came here. What did you, where did you oh, hear um, about us yeah, and what we're doing? Uh, so I did the Cal State San Marcos Writing Institute in the summer of 21. And so I keep in touch with a lot of people from there. And then somebody had just sent me the link for this because we did a lot of writing stuff that summer, well, every summer we do, but, uh, yeah. you know, I just saw it and I signed it up. <laughs> Super cool. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. David. Yeah. If you're still there, you are. Okay. I'm still here. I said, uh, there we go. Um, I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm a longtime fan and um, sometimes collaborator with a writing project. Former writing teacher of 13 years, worked in education technology and publishing for a bunch of it. And, um, Appreciate this, these conversations that Paul hosts every Wednesday. Cool. Well, thanks for coming again. Yeah. Um, I, Chris. Chris. Hi. Uh, Please introduction and we'll come back to you. Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan and I teach high school English and photography and media production at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this summer, I also taught 12 pre service teachers. Uh, and we messed around a little bit with AI. They were, I taught them in Galway, Ireland. Um, and wow. so we also experimented a little bit with AI there. So yeah, glad to be here. Cool. Um, and uh, I'm Paul Allison. And um, my most recent interest has been to try to think about um, the, the notion of using AI as a student. So I've been using thinking partners to play with um, um, what it would mean to say, hey, you're a ninth grader and I have this question about this text. Can you answer it kind of thing? Anyway, that's what I've been playing with. So um, we, can get, we can come around to some of that uh, a little bit later. Uh, the... Um, do want to get, leave a little room here before we get to Chris's story about today's meeting and what he's thinking about. Um, just to say a brief word about what you're thinking about AI in particular around education. So don't we don't have to go around, but 
Gigi, you're you're sort of uh, newest to us here. If you don't, how are you thinking about AI these days? Uh, or are you? Yeah. Sorry. I'm cooking dinner. So. Oh, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but if you don't oh, it's mind. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So well, you're a drama teacher, so we can. <laughs> yeah. So, but I have my students write. Like my students have always written plays. They're you know and submit them to competitions and stuff. And then I will have uh, eighth grade English this year. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really think much of it until this summer. And like I've actually found a couple of um, apps that have like helped me so that I could have my stuff like actually more organized when it comes to like spell work and uh, so you've used it for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So like that's that's what it is. And then I'm also the I'll be the history day coordinator for the school as well. And I've done that for years. So I figured, you know, it'll probably be helpful for researching and showing the kids like what is a valid source and what is not other than showing them don't go to Wikipedia. <laughs> that was, we banned that 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Daniel, what are you studying? If you don't mind, could you briefly? Or yeah. What are you working? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm working on uh, middle school AI literacy. Um, so trying to add AI to some uh, elective CS and STEM classes in middle schools. That you're teaching yourself or other te te you're working with teachers? I'm working with teachers. Oh, cool. It's partly why I'm here because I just want to hear what's going on. <laughs> no, that's cool. Thanks. When do you actually start with them, or have you started already? Or? I will be starting when school starts in a week or two. <laughs> oh, so you're like Chris in that way. Yeah. Cool. And Peggy, what have you been cooking up around AI? I'm just really interested in it. I follow a lot of people that use it, and mm -hmm. I participate in things that use it. Uh, I'm not personally using it, but... I am really interested in it. My daughter is using it. She's a cookie maker, and she uses it to share about her cookie making. How does she do that? Just by uh, taking pictures, lots of pictures, and describing, writing blog posts, that sort of thing. Cool, cool. Marina, what have you been thinking about these days? Well, um, <laughs> I, I guess... I've been using a lot of the, well, we've been working with our, the residents in the Lute STEM and NOISE program, and they've been using Thinking Partners and Now Comet. Um, and I was kind of using it to generate um, images and then like write some poetry on it. And that's something that um, my tech director and I are probably going to start doing with, or may try to do in the future with our students or do some planning around that. Hmm, cool. Cool, cool. And I, Bob, you're either on top of David or he left. I'm not sure which. Um, he was no, I'm there. here, you guys. I'm, oh, just you're... Eating, I'm eating my dinner and keeping my mind. Okay, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> you guys are on top of each other right now. We can't see you. I'll, okay. try, I'll try to move. Okay, good. Perfect, yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay. I'm going to stay off camera and off mic too. I'm mostly in listening mode tonight, Paul. That's cool, cool. Good to know. Okay. David, anything you want to throw in there while you're cooking dinner? <laughs> um, actually, eating dinner. Oh, um, eating dinner. Oh, um, okay. uh, I'm just continuing to play around with these tools. Um, I'm a, I've been a learning designer in different things for many years, and the advent of AI and its arrival has just blown me away as a former writing teacher. So I, I spent a bunch of time, for example, on inflection AI trying to have a conversation with that chatbot and see just what the experience was. Um, I'm, the com I'm just iterating a little bit in the way that you, that you you have been doing for a while, Paul, that we started with character AI that's kind of unfolded in the way it has with learning partners and all of these different um, templates. There's kind of working through templates and workflows that let people complete tasks with, that integrate AI. And so I'm very interested in the way that people are putting it into practice and talking about it with their colleagues. Um, it feels like an important thing to be doing. Cool, cool, welcome. Bob, do you wanna say anything? You said you're in listening mode, but we were just going around and checking in with everybody basically at this point. 
not uh, no major updates. Just okay. just gonna listen. To you. Cool, cool. So let's turn to what we promised uh, that tonight would begin focusing on, which is Chris Sloan had a big meeting today. <laughs> there, there's a <our> setup. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, uh, um, he so. had an A meeting today. One of the first of the semester. Is that right? For, I think this would be this was the first meeting of the school year, and it was a meeting before the meeting week. So, um, the assistant principal said we should get together and we should talk about you know, chat GBT and AI, uh, and what we're going to do. And so, um, we got together today with all the department chairs at my school, and um, you know we just. In the summer, I feel like it's theoretical, like what's what's the possibilities for AI? You know, what what are the, you know, the limitations and what are the dangers and that kind of stuff. But now it's like, yeah, uh, August 14th, I'm actually going to be in a room with people who are already actively using it. Um, and so now the rubber starts to hit the road. So today, you know, we were talking about um, what's that going to look like for everybody in our setting and so i will pop something into the chat here that is my notebook uh on uh now comment just as a little background so um what i'm trying to do is i have three questions that i'm thinking about right now and how you know like how are they actually how are my students actually going to use ai with me in my writing class in particular so this is seniors. Did, just to bridge for sure here, did you hmm. share this in that meeting or how did, did you get a chance to? No, this was what I kind of put together after the meeting. I shared some okay. of this in the meeting, um, but what- So can you, you say were, a little more about what people are saying? Are they afraid sure. of it or are they yeah. excited about it? Yeah, so it? Um, yeah. pretty much everybody is saying it's here. AI is here for you know 15 to 18 year olds. They're already using it. Um, nobody advocated for, well, we better shut this thing down. You know, everybody realizes it's here, it's a tool. And so different degrees of knowledge about it. Like some people have been actively playing with it quite a bit this summer. Uh, and some people still have not engaged with it at all, but still understand like, you know, that it's, it's here and it's for this person I'm thinking of, it's kind of scary because this person, um, this is the chair of the physical education department, first of all, doesn't know, you know, how it's going to impact that curriculum. Um, but the, you know, the drama person was um, also really interested. So Gigi, you know, there was the chair of the performing arts department, who um, is, is trying to wrap his head around, um, you know, like how What's it going to look like to have students write reviews when they can go out and just get those reviews, right? Um, and and he actually encountered some things last year where people, you know, at the very last of the school year, just turned in stuff that was clearly Chat GPT, and it was this big problem for him. Um, so you know, we talked about pedagogy. You know, maybe we need to rethink how we do writing assignments. Which you know, this is a lot of writing project people, so we're kind of preaching to the choir here, but those things where it's like a one and done, give me an essay that's 500 words in two weeks and presto asking students to um, deliver is kind of, you know, setting it up for something like an AI. Um, so there's that. Uh, the foreign la world languages person was saying that a lot of their teaching and assessment is going to be um, pen on paper. Um, uh, there will be a lot of the person I'm thinking of, the Spanish teacher here, uh, was saying like, oh, they can use AI as much as they want, but uh, they've got to prove that they know eventually, you know, they've got to show that they can communicate in a foreign language. So that um, she's thinking right now is going to be pen on paper. Um, so there's that. Uh, the science teacher is was really interested but also you know like you know if if done in a in a certain kind of way you're going to get a lot of um ai answers to you know chemistry problems because those answers are out there um so um you know that was kind of going around the room so in general the people were pretty uh open and understand that it is a tool 
but we need to have some kind of policy. So the thing I shared was I, what I did was our academic, you know, our discipline person, the assistant principal who's in charge of uh, discipline, put together uh, some verbiage for our handbook. And, and I thought it actually seemed decent to me. Um, and so, for example, um, let's see, I'm looking at my document here. You know, he starts off with like, this is an amazing tool. So, he, you know, this is our discipline handbook. You know, like this is what the students get. They sign that, you know, like there's all kinds of rules like do this or you're done, you know, that kind of stuff. And so there was a new section that he just put together and, and he was really feeling like he was under the gun uh, because we start, you know, like it has to be, this is a physical student handbook, like it's printed. So it, it's at the printers already. So he did a lot of this work with, you know, colleagues around the nation, I guess. But anyway, it's done. That's our school policy. So I shared that. Um, but, you know, I liked, he opens with like, yeah, this is, it's an amazing tool. Here's what he's defining as responsible uses. And then he goes into like inappropriate uses. Um, I thought, you know, what, an interesting point he made was that like, yeah, use it, but cite it when you use it, um, you know, which seemed reasonable to me. Um, my thing is always like cite your work. Um, and so one of my themes this year is going to be, I really need to see their sources for argumentative and infor in informational writing. Like I want to see those sources because as we know, large language models tend to approximate those sources and they aren't real. So I think as long as they can demonstrate that they've got sources and they're actively thinking about them through their annotations, and then that they're incorporating that thought into their writing, I think we'll be okay. So that's kind of my one big takeaway from uh, what we're doing this year. But another thing, and I'll stop after this. Okay. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting in the discipline handbook policy was that like teachers are going to use this to detect, you know, AI. But in there is a statement that says, you know what, we are, um, I'll read it. It says, uh, we also recognize that these are imp imprecise fact-finding tools and that they are capable of making errors. So, you know, I think there's an awareness. That, that's the tools to, to, to see the, you know, like, is AI. Yeah, to sure. catch whether it's AI or not, you know, Got like okay. turn yeah. it in or something. But I thought that was nice instead of saying like, wagging his finger and saying if you do it we're going to catch you there's this admission that like it's it it could give us false positives so i think that kind of opens up some room for discussion with students so i think i was pretty um pretty pleased with i think what we've got going uh, for our own policy and then also because i teach with michigan state in the summer they also the other day came out with their own guidance because higher ed is definitely um you know freaking out a little bit about some of those things that you would write in a college classroom are you know definitely a lot of the things i'm thinking up are are set for pop that stuff into ai and just give a response um so i think theirs is a really interesting um policy too uh and and so anyway i could stop right there for now i think and i'm thinking it'd be nice if people could talk about how you think schools might be thinking about this or do you know already and and how how colleagues are talking yeah and i just i'll stop after yeah. this the reason i put that out there was because i think a lot of people are in this situation where it's like what are we doing coming up. And so I thought, you know, I'd put that our policy out there as kind of a general template because I'm sure you know, there's a lot of similar things going on. And so we should be talking about them. I got a follow-up question if I can throw one out, please. Chris, um, I really like the, you know, the, the idea that you're looking for citation and um, basically a decent bibliography or a way to people to sort of register where their sources were. Just at a simple level, is have you um, seen or, or thought about the way that students would be sharing that? I mean, it's it's already mm -hmm. sort of tricky with the citations and style yeah. guides. And now, I mean, I'm thinking a little bit of like what Ethan Mullick does when he does his screenshots or what we do. But 
sure. you know, it, it's such a remix, you know, and the fact that half the references that get thrown out at you and the responses from AI are, are shady and, and a sort of opaque. But, you know, ultimately they lead you to things. I can think of about a 30% of my AI sort of efforts to get citations surfaced. About 30% lead me back to a regular two-dimensional web page where I just say, you know what, this isn't really getting me anywhere. I'll go ask Google. And then I get, I go back into, and I get a better mode, but it's a complement of things that I would say represent the source material, so to speak, if I were in your class. And if I were a teacher, I was, I'd be like, well, how, how would I capture that in a way that honors the kid's effort and doesn't make it a chore? Is there, have you, have you thought of it all about the sort of artifact they would generate to sort of show what their research looked like? How do you make their research visible? Has that come up? Yeah. Before? Yeah. So, I mean, I, if it's on paper, which some of it is going to be, I still believe in these things called books that, you know, like, are yeah. nice. you know, like, I think that's really important and pleasant to read from a book. So I, I want to see like physical annotations. Sure. I just want to see them, you know, yeah. am I going to keep track of all those things? No. Nice. Um, but then on now comment, I would say <laughs> that's where I've been for a few years seeing their thinking about the text. Right. And so, you know, if I can see them wrestling with the text and annotating uh, there in those two places, yeah, I feel like it's, and then I'm going to tell them also that like, we'll use Google docs. And so they should have a version history. Right. So it goes back to kind of the older days, like seventies, uh, you know, sixties and seventies of process writing, where I'm a lot more interested in the process yeah. And maybe I have been maybe five years ago. I think 10, five to 10 years ago, things were getting so slick that like, wow, you can produce beautiful stuff. You know, like you don't, you know, desktop publishing, wow, 20 years ago. And, you know, like what you can do with Canva, I think I tended to emphasize more product uh, than I did process. And so sure. I think there's going to be more emphasis on process and that's messy and that's hard and time consuming. So I don't know if I have a great answer really when you get down to it, but I do want to see a version history mm -hmm. uh, and, and have them talk me through how they got there. But again, managing that in a classroom opens up some options for AI, but you know, like that's, if I'm just going to be trying to do that, it's going to be a challenge, but I do want to do that with, with each student at least. You know, if, if I could just uh, identify, I think I'm hearing between both of you is, is this the messiness of the process needs to be um, more evident because of AI in some way, mm -hmm. yeah. which is which is not something anybody's I hear anybody talking about. So that feels like a inter very interesting thing for to highlight in some way, right? Like how if we are going to use AI, we're going to need to think about capturing students' process. In, yeah, in, in, for in example, their creative I, was, process. Yeah. I was talking to someone about an elementary school teacher about in elementary school, a lot of times students lead the parent teacher conference or, you know, mm -hmm. right. not that it always has to be parents, but, you know, in high school, that all tends to get buried uh, in my setting. And it's like, guardian shows up and said how's junior doing and i'm like well you know here's the numbers or here's like an essay and so it makes me go back to even in the classroom there's a shift that has to take place where the student is going to be talking more about like well you know here's where i started and and then i tried to do this so mm -hmm. yeah nice. daniel do you have anything to add from your the middle school you'll be working at and how they're thinking about things? Yeah, uh, I mean, one slight kind of difference is uh, the middle school that I'll primarily be working at, um, they've always been really research focused. They're, it's a charter school that's always been trying new things and stuff like that. So they're, as far as I can tell, leaning pretty heavily towards, hey, how can we use this and all that. Um, and I think it also like I'm personally doing it with it in elective classes mm -hmm. that I think kind of nece necessarily have a little bit less 
cheating because they want to be there. It's an elective, um, most of the time, at least. Uh, and, and they're computer-based classes, or uh, yeah. So computers are accessible in the classes. They're not used but, every day, but yeah. But uh, so, w what are the nature of the classes, though? I, I think... uh, the class that I'll be dealing with at that school is uh, Mesa, so mathematics, engineering, and science achievement. Okay. So and, they're less concerned about the chat GPT detectors and stuff like that, there at least. So Mark and I, uh, Mark Warshower and I are, uh, through our lab, they're talking to a bunch of schools, districts, community colleges, everybody. And mm -hmm. um, all of these issues are, I, I've seen pretty much across the board. Um, I have had community college professors come to me and say, hey, look, I don't want I don't want to incorporate it. I just want to know when students are cheating. All, all the way to, I don't care if students are using it. Like that's part of their process. I just, I've just seen such a spectrum of, of, uh, I don't know, expected use. So, right. So, uh, I, I get that sense too. No matter what room I get into, walk in, right? That, that there are people uh, on the spe that kind of spectrum, right? So the question is, how do we talk to them if we want to move forward with AI, right? In other words, how do we, how do we, how do we respect pe where people are and then think about where we as advocates, I am at least <laughs> of AI in the classroom might approach people. Is that a fair question? I, yeah. I yeah, think just yeah. As, and I'll pop out here, but um, yeah. like I had a student last year who prided himself on, I will not use AI. You know, so there's that, you know, you have to, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> this is this is a conversation that I've found easier to have with K-12 than higher education is mm -hmm. uh, actually having people rethink kind of, uh, think about why students are cheating and how we can try and solve that at a different place than just, oh, like banning chat GPT or something like that. Yeah. Um, Versus, you know, it's I've had I've had an easier time in K twelve than in higher education, but I've have had the same conversation in higher education. Um, then you, I, I, I just I just want if I could just uh, I, I I it's not the cheating that I'm concerned. It's it's the parent. I mean, Chris mentioned this when we were talking earlier, but it's the parent who who might come in and say, "I don't want my kid touching that stuff." Right? How do we talk to that parent? Because I think that's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and or the kid who says, I'm a creative person. I hate AI. Don't, you know, don't make me do that. Right. And then you have the kid who's, you know, don't make, don't use AI in the classroom. Cause I'm, che I'm not cheating, but I'm using it and I really love it. And I don't want you to mess up my, my <laughs> flow. Right. <laughs> I just think that teachers need to think about that kind of complicated thing that's going to go on in the classroom. Right. Gigi, have you thought about that at all, or not necessary, or I'm just calling on you if you want to jump in here? <laughs> um, no, I haven't thought about it at all uh, okay. until recently. Is that so, true? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, I, I think the because of the way I teach and what I've taught for so long, the process has always been like the most important, not so much the product. The product always ends up being the product. And it's just always been for me to make sure that kids follow the process and they learn from that because, and they learn the time management for it. So I think as long as they don't become like, you know, dependent, that's my only worry is the ones that are gonna be dependent on it and then when I take students, because my students are low income, so access probably won't be as much as some of the schools they compete against. And so my worry is that judges will not be able to differentiate between a student who was just strictly creative and a student who just used AI to do the whole thing for them. Mm -hmm. And then they could end up, you know, putting forth a lot of effort and realize, well, I could have just used AI and scored higher. That's where my worry is, is because there's already a huge, um, 
you know, in it, in equity in the competitions that I take kids to. Mm. And, um, you know, I just worry that it's going to end up being something that could cause them more heartache because that's one the of, last thing I want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of my colleagues out of uh, Columbia, um, so he examined discussion posts on Canvas for undergraduates. Uh, discussion posts on Canvas pre and post chat GPT. So pre and post the release date. Um, and one of the super interesting things that he found, I don't know if he's even published it yet. He just came to Mark and I with the results, but um, the discussion post quality in, increased for uh, high SES students and not for low SES students. Hmm. Um, so there is absolutely the, the uh, kind of... So the implication is the ones where it increased they were using Pot uh, potentially using chat. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Marina or Peggy, do, do you want to have any thoughts to jump in on any of this yet? Or... I just find this really interesting and I I um I don't know. It seems to me that you can just encourage the use of AI and not make it a bad thing you know, make it um, okay and legitimate to use. Um, if you were an administrator, what would you do? You were an administrator. But I was were, an administrator. I know, but if, if you I were there, yeah. What? <laughs> I said, I wish I had it then. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you don't get the same results every time you use AI either. You know, you can put the same prompt in and get something different every time. So, I mean, it, it stretches your thinking. I mean, I, I think citing it is important, you know, to give, to let people know that you're not claiming credit for something that you didn't originate, but. Can, can, can we, can we um, unpack that question a little sure. bit though? Because Marina and I had a disagreement. About, I'm not disagreeing, but anyway, a question about that and we never resolved it. I, I just like, what does it mean to cite chat GPT? It's like, if I use it, is if I use it to give me three good questions and then I do the writing, should I cite it? You know, I mean, I don't. Well, I don't, it depends I, on I don't where, think... where the writing comes from. Did it come from? Well, those questions came from a large LLM. You know, I just don't. I. The response did too. I mean, and, and the, another kind of, re I, let me just set this up this way but like you don't cite microsoft word right as 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 a tool that you use to to write this document right you don't cite those kinds of tools why are we citing this tool like like you don't cite grammarly you right know? It, the, the, another good example but uh, yeah i think you i mean to Peggy's point, it, it, mm -hmm. key question was: Was it were you working off a response and putting it in in whole cloth, or are you working off sort of framing information? I mean, Grammarly is, and Comingo and others are advertising that they're they're taking the role that they're they're writing their AIs and fine tuning them so that they become not just editors but tutors, right? And uh, right. and that's and, what and we're trying to do too. Right? Yeah, and if, and if they're really well designed, they will prompt and guide and nudge and will they, they will graciously avoid providing the response but to peggy's point i guess that's a key question right is if you're getting a response and you're copying and pasting it and, it, and you're not setting it up as a cited example the way you might with a quote from a primary source but you're having it represent your own thinking i mean look how much thinking i'm having to do to think it through right now i'm I asking a ninth grader to, to, to say here's how i thought about it goes back to the call right and i'm just using it it's just it's just a tool and it see it does seem like that's going to be what we come to think of it as in short order right but it's there are and challenges I, I, and and just and, and i'm totally i you know i yeah. want to see transparency i want to sure. you know talk about how you're using it and you know but, but the word citing it, it it seems a little odd to me because it's almost like citing a conversation you had with someone when you were talking about the writing. Yes. Are you going to cite your peer group? <laughs> no. 
I did yeah. a quick look up about this um, topic mm -hmm. at, at the beginning of our conversation, and I asked it, um, do you cite sources with AI? And I got a, quite a range of responses from saying the library does not recommend that you use or cite works generated from AI. That was one of them. And that mm -hmm. there's no standard way to cite an answer uh, from ChatGPT because it's a machine learning model and not a published work. Right. Sure. Well, so there yeah. were some really interesting things there. A lot of food for thought. It says there are very few official guidelines on how to cite the use of AI. So rather than getting into this controversy with colleagues, right? Just, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe <laughs> the way I just did with you. Maybe, maybe we can all agree that we want to be transparent about how how yes. we want we want students to talk about and and show how they're using process. Them. Yeah, using this tool. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds me, I mean, structurally, um, when I would do college and career work or something like that, and there was sort of a parallel track going on in, term, in, re, in relation to the disciplinary learning on the topic. I'm reminded, Daniel, you know, you're in, a, you're in an elective class. Technology is often thought of as sort of an, augment, an augmentation or an extension of the learning. It's sort of run to run parallel, you know, and to the extent, like to your point, Paul, with the now comment and the idea of a notebook and so forth, but mm -hmm. if, student, if there's a parallel uh, assignment, and I know you guys have done this when you have students use whether they annotate their own books, Chris, to your point, and just can open their spines and show you that they're putting in marginalia, or with people who actively use um, hypothesis, where there's a parallel workflow that's devoted to, you know, maintaining a digital record of, of a complementary line of thinking and generation of content. It feels almost like if that can be, if that becomes part of the syllabus, and you say, okay, we're going to be working on a technology dialogue together and we're going to maintain this kind of like a journal in parallel with our x subject work and we're going to sort of look at how we used it over the course of the year i mean it's it's a whole backwards plan of how do you devote yeah. time and manage it right but it, at least that that surfaces it in a way that doesn't get complicated by your point paul like saying hey it's just a word processing thing, or the kind of the headache of trying to format and find a citation style like MLA or something for a, it, it's not an administrative function. It's a thinking process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it goes back. Gigi mentioned something about motivation earlier. Right. And, and one of the dangers of, you know, the way I've seen some of my students use chat GPT is like, I, I skated this thing. It's passable fooled teacher. And yeah. I guess the danger is like, Oh, that's, that doesn't motivate students to, you know, that student to push himself very much. And so if writing is thinking, I mean, that's that's why we want them writing. Well, yes. one of the reasons, right? So writing is thinking. Then it seems like I have to put more emphasis on the thinking that went into the writing. So, yeah. And how to share that. Yeah, yeah. Marina, I want to uh, invite you to come back a little bit with, if you don't mind, <laughs> sure. with, with how, like, you mentioned something about using images and poetry and you're talking to a colleague about that. So how, do, how are those conversations happening or what are you thinking about around all that? Yeah, well, um, you know, my colleague Alana and I were talking, we talked about this before we even did our work with the residents, Paul, mm -hmm. about the prompt engineering around um, AI generated art. But what I can say for myself is that um, I feel like I'm definitely like one of those in the middle type of people with all of this. <laughs> and I even wrote down my quote that time where I said, I don't want it to make anything for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but what I've kind of been having fun with for myself as, as an individual and as a writer is saying like, well, how can I find the blend between all of that for myself with what I want to create, which is like some poetry and, and getting some visual prompts that are unique enough, like that something that, you know, no one else has ever seen before and in alignment with my goals. So I've kind of liked playing around with um, 
I guess the, the notebook and the one prompt of um, text to prompt, uh, text to image prompt mm -hmm. making and kind of like continuing to build and build and build. And like, I kind of finished off one of my journey. I didn't follow, the <laughs> I did not do what the residents were doing, but I'm not a resident, so I didn't have to. But <laughs> <laughs> I finished my one log note. And then what I ended up doing is like, I went through all these lines that I wrote. I mean, I wrote them. And then I kind of like said, well, how do I want them to go to our so I had all this like work from like a week and then I don't know. And I kind of like felt for me like that was like a, a good space. But I do that too, like not just for myself, but then to think about like, well, if I was going to show that to learners, like how, how would I lead them through that process? And you started with the text, right? Yeah, I just, I just started with my goals. So I think my goals were drink more water. <laughs> oh. Keep working on my podcast. But okay. they were text, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And then there was something else. Oh, yeah. And then I think I put in like, you know, how would Gustav Klimt represent this? And I got this beautiful image. Nice. Um, and then I <laughs> used that, and then I wrote, and then I think I I forget who I did for the next one. I said, now what would so and so represent this? So it was like adding in more language, not a lot because it's just short phrases, but. Oh, it was fun. So I just hearing you talk and then how natural it was for you then to say, how would I bring this to my students mm -hmm. is, is, you know, as writing project teachers, we kind of know that's, that's like the way it ought to be. Right. But so, so teachers making decisions about bringing AI to their classroom who haven't had that kind of creative experience around it yet. I, you know, I worry about, all right. I wonder how that's going to go mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I'm not really worried about it, but, but I, I think they just set up like, I like it or don't like it or, you know, that kind of thing. And, and like, I want to say, no, be creative and then see what, what it means to you. Right. <laughs> and so, but Chris, a long time ago, you were going to lead us more into what your three questions and what you want to, can we come back to that? Sure. Yeah. Um, and as you're, or you go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I, as you're setting up, I just want to mention as, as far as one of the ways we started with Bonnie's students, and, and I want to kind of give and recommend this to you, right? Um, is, is starting with images um, and, 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 on Youth Voices and now, but, but they could do it on Now Common too, but certainly in, on Youth Voices, there are two images. There's the profile image and then there's a background image that they could create using AI. Um, and there is a template that helps them do that. Um, part of the reason I was recommending is that we found that starting with images kind of fires the imagination about what this tool can do in some way, I think. Um, so that's one, that's how to, how to use AI in, in your welcoming back exercises with, right? It sounds like a funny question perhaps, but I, I think that's one way, like create an image to represent who you are, share that with each other, however you do it. We do it on Youth Voices in a particular kind of way, but I think that's an exciting, Introduction to AI, using AI, and also introducing yourself with AI, you know, with the tool. So I'll put that out there, but now you come back with your your thoughts of what you're thinking about. Um, so I do, one of my questions is, you know, to what extent do I include my students and their guardians in conversations and decisions about the tools used in my classes? So I want to go back to the, you know, let's to the people who say, I don't want my kid touching it, or I don't want to touch it because I am a creative person and I stand on my own. Um, you know, one of the things that in the prompt engineering is, is kind of a, you know, it's a exercise in empathy. So, you know, describe or even making art, you know, describe as carefully as you can this image that you'd like to see. 
And so um, by doing that, I feel like I could, I might be able to actually create that image with my own phone. Anyway, but the thinking that goes into that seem like they're, they're the same thing. And so, um, right, so the people who say, I don't want to do this, then I would say, well, then demonstrate that you can say the text back to me, you know, try to do what you, I would want you to have AI do, um, is one way I'm thinking about, like, including all students in this conversation, even the ones who don't want to have anything to do with it or their, or their parents. So if they can do the thinking that I want to accomplish by their, eventually their prompt engineering, seems like that I'm accomplishing a similar goal. That seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they so resistive to using AI? I mean, well, did they think it's cheating? This may not, Peggy, this may not be a problem, but. Yeah, I just <laughs> like to don't. imagine, like, because <laughs> if you've ever walked into a setting and you're so excited about this thing, yeah. you're doing, and then somebody says, I don't want to do it, you know, <laughs> I want to be. That ready. wasn't the question. <laughs> Yeah, but th there was a student last semester who said, I don't even touch it, you know, and and so it was That's so insane. new, you know, that I it wasn't a problem. I was like, OK, yeah. you know, don't. so I, but but see, I want to unpack the it there. Right. And going back Marina's Marina's comment earlier, I don't want it to make things for me. I mean, I, I can agree with that. Right. But um if we can unpack the, I don't want to touch it. What is the it you don't want to touch? We could probably agree with that. We don't want you to, you know, produce essays and we don't want it to make things for you. But there are ways to use it that yes. we can show you that are kind of exciting and interesting, right? Yeah. I have a lot. Yeah. I have a lot of um, students who I, I, the community I work in. They're low income, but I have a, a good group of them are extremely religious and they mm. will not use it because they believe it is the sign of the beast. Mm. So oh, no, there's a problem I had. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. where the, the big issue will be is like, okay, you don't have to mm. use this then. But yeah, there, there's, I've had that said to me by a parent. Like my kid can't use that because, you know, and they there and it's like, OK, well, I'm not going to argue with you over, you know, your religious beliefs. We'll just go with a pen and paper now. Have any of you heard of um, the Chrome extension Max AI dot me? I just learned about that today. And it sounds really interesting. It's a it's a tool that you can use with Chrome that helps you improve your writing um, with with ChatGPT and AI. Hmm. And it's you can do it online. Cool. What's it called again? It's called um, MaxAI.me. Mm -hmm. All. Uh, I'll put this link. I think I can figure out how to do this in my chat thing. It's it, yeah. Under people, then find the chat. You just want to. Do I click on my picture? No. Um, on the lower left side where yes. it says people. Got it. Open people, and then you can choose choose the uh, rooms full of toys. Oh, right at the top, okay. the shared chat. That way, it'll it'll stick Got forever. It. Yeah. There. All right. There it is. That gives right. a nice description of how to use it. Cool. Um, Chris, do you, do you, can you say a little more about what you're planning to do um, in your classroom? Your because when you and I talked, if, if I could prompt you this way, um, we talked about how it looked like there we were using the tool we were using ai in three different ways this is where i thought you were going to go but I, I could be wrong um one is um to quote bob montgomery um like a handball court right so it, um a, a way to use ai to kind of strengthen my own thinking my own writing my own reading um another is to 
um, maybe connect peer response, uh, the students' response to each other, to criterion. Is that am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. To criteria of some sort, but to improve, strengthen, um, maybe embolden, whatever um, peer response to each other. And yeah. then the third way to think about it is how teacher using AI to respond to student work is going to change things. And, right. and to so, my mind, those three questions would be a, a really kind of wonderful research to see how those three things are playing out during right. the semester. Can you say more about that? Sure. Uh, that? So yeah. for example, um, one of the first pieces of writing my students are really going to be interested in doing is the college application essay. And it's this weird beast where it's actually something that they don't want other people to read because it comes across like I'm bragging or it's talking about really private stuff. And it's this weird audience of one or two people at this college that, you know, it's anonymous. It's These are seniors, by the way. Go seniors ahead. in high school. Yeah. yeah. And so in that setting there, you know, I always ask them every year, like, you know, how do you want to do this kind of stuff? And categorically, it's like, it's OK if you look at it but I don't want my peers looking at this thing and, and for good reason. And so that strikes me as a place where there's only one of me. And so I can meet with them after school, but it takes me at least a half hour to talk to someone about that kind of stuff and, and to have them read even a little bit of it. So if, if they can script someone who's, you know, got the common app kind of schema or, you know, the rubric, there isn't really a rubric, but you know, if they could create a learning thinking partner like that to give them feedback over and over, you know, like iterate, iterate, iterate. I feel like there's a lot of potential there. And that's kind of like the playing tennis with yourself yeah. using the backboard. Um, and so that, that strikes me as a lot of potential there because I want to give them good feedback and, and I will do that, but there's only one of me. And the other thing that Paul kind of touched on was my students still rarely give good feedback. Uh, you know, like they don't, you know, they, there's this social pressure to, you know, be friends and say nice things. But they also just don't know oftentimes what to give feedback about. And so by having them articulate, let's say, the rubric of an assignment to prompt engineer a partner who could actually say back to them the stuff that's supposed to be in this assignment strikes me as, you know, that's empathy. Like I'm understanding the assignment in a different way than just looking at a rubric. I'm actually internalizing that thing and then having it speak back to me strikes me as, you know, like that could be generative. Mm -hmm. Cool ideas. Um, we're kind of getting up to the top of the hour here. I want to give people a chance to come back in with any thoughts you're having, having heard this conversation. Gigi, uh, welcome. Please come back another Wednesday. But what are you thinking now about AI or anything? If um, yeah. So, no, I think it's going to be, I think it'll work out um, well. I just need to make sure that the AI, like the ones I've played with are like, Chrome extensions, but some of those don't work on my like work laptop. They've blocked it. So uh, the district blocked that stuff. So I have to do it through my my personal like Gmail account at home and uh, stuff like that. But I think it'll be helpful for the kids like when they have to, you know, as long as they get all their sources and they get the information when they have that that difficult time from getting taking all this stuff that they learned and making sense out of it. I think that's where it'll help. Mm -hmm. Gigi, um, nowcomment.com, we, 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 um, check it out. Uh, let me just say that because, because I entering these conversations, I think, let me just, let me just say this very, very quickly and, and clearly, I hope, um, we have developed a tool on now comment that allows students to use to use ai safely and to have their privacy protected um and and we, i also think it has lots of uh, pedagogical value but i think going into conversations with colleagues and saying those two things is really important 
because <laughs> they have good reason to wonder, you know, is it okay to have all my kids go on chat GPT or even some of these other things? I think there are some real questions about privacy and, you know, protect, protecting people's data. And I think we, we are well on the way to having some answers to that, um, just to say. So check out notcom.com, Gigi, and others if you're listening. And, and that's one place to kind of get started, we're saying. Okay. But others, yes. Sorry. Any other thoughts as we're coming? Daniel, I feel like... Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like were, my were you my talking last to somebody uh, else, or were you talking about us? Yeah, you were <laughs> typing furiously. But yeah. uh, I was actually taking some notes because some of the things that we've talked about make me, you know, I want to have some some discussions yeah, yeah, with Mark so. about some things that we talked about. But I think one of the big things is uh, is this AI is forcing us to explicitly look at and potentially change a lot of paradigms in classrooms that have been unchanged for a while. Um, that I think some teachers had already been trying to change, mm -hmm. but uh, it's kind of just forcing the issue. And I think a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of the issues we're having are how do we re envision a classroom where we, you accept AI as a possibility? Um, and I don't, I I have no answer. I don't think there will be an easy answer. <laughs> I mean, I I just to repeat, but. I think within some of what you just said, that whole notion of emphasizing process of a product is something that a lot of us have done for a long time. Yeah. But you're right, it hasn't necessarily, you know, it's not everywhere at all. Um, and we haven't at all solved the problem of how to actually capture the process as, you know, so yeah, those are interesting questions. Mm -hmm. Peggy. I just wanted to say that I really like the document you created, Chris, on now comment and all of the points that you made. I was skimming through it as we were talking, and I want to go back and read it more carefully, but I think you've raised some really good, valuable things to think about when you're thinking about using AI in the classroom. So thank you for doing that. And Peggy, thank you for joining us. You have joined us in the past and not, said, not said as much, so it's wonderful to hear your voice. <laughs> it's great to be here with you. Great, great. Marina, any kind of thoughts here? Yes, here we go. <laughs> Don't have to. <laughs> okay. No. So. Cool, cool. David, um, one last word. <laughs> or Chris, you do. Yeah. Um, so Chris, thank you for um, taking the time to explain this yes. stuff. It's really fun to think of people actually launching into the school year now and thinking really practically about what's going to happen. It's, 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 it's really interesting. And um, people are going to get very inventive. It's going to be very interesting to see how this rolls out now in, in these settings. Yes. So thanks. Yeah, and I would uh, end by saying it's really just an act of self-preservation. <laughs> <laughs> totally. They're, coming, they're that. coming in no matter what, so I better be thinking about it. Ready or oh. not, here we come. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> all right, thank you all. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Bye.